several of our friends from the South Dakota Master Gardeners group suggested visiting Hackberry Hollow to do a show. I did some research and found that Jerry Ward, the owner of Hackberry Hollow, enjoys fruits. First, he has trees with fruits. Second, he has fruits of mushrooms growing from his logs. And finally, he has the fruit of his labor, making wood products from the trees harvested on his land. Thanks, Jerry, for letting us come to visit. You're welcome. First of all, tell us about your background. I was a general contractor for 20 years in Sioux Falls. Uh, I grew up on a farm in Colorado and we raised fruit there. But here you can actually raise more than you can in Colorado. Uh, even though we have such cold winters, we don't get the, the winter kill that we did in Colorado. And then of course we got the, such rich soil here. It's, it's almost like tropical what you can do in about four or five months, you know. How did you establish or when did you establish Hackberry Hollow? Uh, well, we bought the farm here in 92 and I had a pretty good sized garden, but then we actually started an LLC in 2002 called Hackberry Hollow LLC. Raising quite a bit of produce then and still in the business, in the construction business. And uh, had to deal with family items in Colorado when my dad passed away. Going back and forth, I ended up just uh, closing the company down, selling all the equipment, and decided I would try the oh, 10 years of uh, uh, farmer's market at the Falls Park Farmer's Market. And it was fun, but, but uh, and it's, I love growing stuff. It's, we joke about it, some of the old friends down there. It's like a sickness that you can't get out of your system, you know. But I still raise a lot of stuff, even though I quit the market in uh, 16, I guess it was. How did you pick the name Hackberry Hollow? Well, we're down in the bottom here on a gravel road, and uh, it's like a hollow down in the south. And we have a lot of big hackberry trees here. In fact, we have the largest hackberry tree in the back field on the whole Big Sioux River system. What kind of fruits do you grow here? Raspberries. Uh, we've got in the tree fruit. We've got uh, cherries, uh, ronia berries, um, apricots, pears, apples. Mostly apples and pears. Yeah, we get frost later than Sioux Falls does, which is only five miles away, because we're in the river bottom. So there's been many a times I've covered little trees, you know, but. You just got to take it the way it is. That's what nature deals out, you know, so. Jerry, do you ever have trouble with pollination at all? Uh, the only thing I have problems with are the uh, pears. Pears normally bloom before apples, and then some years everything ends up, ends up blooming at the same time. This year that happened. Well, this year everything bloomed right at the end of April, including the apples. What has happened is, there's so many uh, blossoms that the bees have to choose from. Since uh, pear blossoms have no fragrance, the bees are not attracted to those trees. They go to the ones that smell good, like the apples and uh, all the other ones. You know, they've got a good fragrance. So they just skip all my pear trees. This year I've got maybe 200 pears out of five trees. And I should have about oh, 20 bushel. So that's the way it is. In order to be uh, certified uh, naturally grown, you can't use any of the normal fruit tree sprays that, that a lot of people use. And uh, so what I did for a while was I would try the jugs, vinegar, and then the sugar water in it. And that worked good for drawing some coddling moths to it. But what we found on some of my trees, you can still see a red ball hanging here and there. And we'd take the red ball in the spring and put uh, tanglefoot's what we would put on there. And if you put it out right after the bloom stage and the little fruit is just starting, that's, that's perfect timing. And, and they think, well, when the moths come around, they think that's an apple. Well, that worked pretty good for a while. And I used to not have very many uh, insect problems or disease problems, but I started raising Honeycrisp apples and Honeycrisp are the, about, 
the most delicate apple I've ever raised. They're just susceptible to every bug and every worm you can think of uh, and disease. But the, the tangle foot on the ball seems to work the best. What do you do with all of your harvest? Well, being that I don't, I'm not in the market anymore, um, there's a young gal nearby and she has an online farmer's market. And uh, it's called Glory Garden and it's pretty cool. She gets orders online and takes the orders in there every Tuesday. So tomorrow she's gonna deliver. Do you find that your trees will produce heavy one year and then rest another year? Certain varieties. Uh, beyond this tree, there's two trees back there that are Harold Red. They're like the, the Harrelson apple. Well, and Cortland too. Both those are really good for uh, apple pies. You know, they're tart. And the Cortland, he produced, he was super heavy last year. He's only got maybe 50 apples on him. And those over there, they're not producing like they did last year. So it's just certain varieties that that happens to. This guy, he produces consistently every year. And you would think he would take a break like some of them do, but no. Thank you.